in areas from around the world, reports of creatures which are supposed to only be myths and legends have inspired many scientists and adventurers to look for the truth and possibility of the existence of undiscovered novel species which science dismisses as shadows, misidentifications, and or hoaxes of animals that possibly coexisted in the very places where locals tell the stories of undiscovered creatures of legends. Um, here's the print cleaned up. Now, World-renowned adventure and tracker Adam Davies has dedicated part of his life searching for proof of the existence of these supposed creatures that have been seen by locals and researchers around the world. His quest to find the evidence needed to confirm these supposed undiscovered creatures has led him on a worldwide quest that has expanded into 15 years of research to collect undeniable evidence of the existence of cryptids like the Aranthan Deck, the Yeti, and most recently, the North American bipedal creature known as Bigfoot. Damien Bravo, who calls himself a student and searcher of Bigfoot, has privately and publicly researched the enigma of Bigfoot for 28 years and recently, in 2012, began writing articles on what some have called fantastical theories on what exactly Bigfoot could possibly be for a popular cryptid and science blog called Bigfoot Evidence. He recently had an opportunity to talk to adventurer and tracker Adam Davies on his quest to find the very creatures that to many scientists and skeptics do not exist. Thank you for taking the time, Adam, to uh, give me the opportunity to do this interview with you. And um, from the get-go, you know, the, the way we met was interesting because uh, you were here in an expedition in America in Washington State. Laurie Simmons, uh, she was part of, of the event that occurred in Washington recently with a strange figure uh, that appeared in a camp that it was that has not been able to be explained yet with the uh, extreme expeditions that Adam Davies was involved. Laurie was one of the people that actually experienced uh, that was out there when the supposed uh, strange uh, figure appeared. Uh, in that one frame in a few seconds of a video that they were to get. And I, I wanted to talk to her because uh, prior I, I had a conversation with Adam and, you know, there was other things that people didn't know that happened prior to that event. And I wanted also to get the opportunity to get her point of view uh, about that. And Lori, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you uh you know today and 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 speak so so laurie you know now that that the events have unfolded and you experienced that you know a lot of things happen but i also wanted to take the opportunity to get you know your point of view of of, of what happened prior uh, to that event they, i think it's a lot there's a story that hasn't been totally told i got adam's a uh, view and how he be, uh, came over to America finally uh, to look into the uh, the big f f uh, uh, enigma, which he's never done before. People don't realize that this is the first time uh, when Adam showed up. Uh, it was in October, correct? September. Oh, I'm sorry, September. That's right. September when, when the event happened. And that was the first time he actually came here to America to actually search uh, for evidence of Bigfoot. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so to tell me, uh, talk about a little bit. Let's let's talk about a little bit about the event. I mean, what what was it initially that brought uh, Adam to come search for you and, and be the person that he would use, uh, you know, to I mean, not use in other words to to communicate and for the first time come to America and search for Bigfoot. Well, basically, Adam had heard about the book that I published in memory of my dad. Don Wallace, and the book is called Tracking Bigfoot, and it's based on my father's real-life experiences, and he was a true mountain man who lived in the North Cascade Mountains for 30 years, and 
due to his experiences in living in the North Cascade Mountains, he came across evidence of Bigfoot. And so he wrote a book that is his journal. And I published that book in memory of my dad, which I finished writing with adding my own personal experiences. And I was, mm, I, I believe my father, but I was a skeptic. I lived in the city. I, I went out there with my father and went fishing. I grew up going in the woods with my dad since I was six years old. So uh, I, I learned tracking experiences through my dad, but I still was a skeptic until I came across evidence myself and became a true believer. And that was after he passed away. So unfortunately, I didn't have the opportunity to tell him, I do believe, <laughs> but I, I believe in him and his experiences and his stories. And so it was based on the book that Adam found me and decided he wanted to go to America and look for Bigfoot, find out what this is all about. And so we planned it for eight months. So he got in contact with you and, and, and then eventually he, he came to America uh, based on reading the father's book and and seeing there was something amazing going on with his story and also yours later on uh, since you took up the mantle of your father. Yes, yes. Now, uh, so my father, he, so you understand, he lived completely off the grid. He didn't have cable TV like everybody else or a computer. He lived in um, a private community that is in the deep forest of the North Cascade Mountains. So just so you know, um, the Cascade River was his backyard and he would go fishing and that's how he lived. So it, it wasn't like he was this guy who lived in the city who went tracking for Bigfoot as a hobby. Yeah. Uh, and your expedition uh, from, from it uh, came some, uh, you know, an amazing photo that caused a, uh, a debate here in America, which uh, even surprised you because you've never really been around the Bigfoot community here in America. And, no, you know, no, not at all. Yeah, that, that, that photo was uh, of a supposed possible uh, Bigfoot that you guys believed at the time uh, uh, could have been. Now, yeah, we kind of call it a creature because we didn't want to put any names to it. Mm -hmm. It was definitely something unusual that we felt was worth sharing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, 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 you know, let's go back to that because I think uh, when when you were interviewed last time, um, you did. I, I don't think you had the opportunity to really uh, uh, give your thoughts because there was more people involved that day uh, uh, in that particular interview that, that a lot of people saw. But, you know, but I wanted to get, get, get your honest opinion uh, on what you believe, you know, uh, was that, you know, you know, the creature. I mean, we, we're calling it a creature, and, and I do agree with you. Some some people called it Bigfoot uh, or a possible primate, you know. I think that was the word you used, uh, I think, because uh, uh, I, I did, you did answer some questions for the Bigfoot yeah. Evidence blog, uh, I do remember. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So what, what do you want me to tell you about about, about yeah that? but it, you know let, let's talk about that let's talk about that because it, it was a strange experience uh because if if it was a creature that 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 was there the events that unfolded uh were very strange and 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 to you you know you you were sleeping out there at night and 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 you uh you know spoke that it wasn't none of the team members and 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 that was something that we talked about uh, in in that photo, was that a team member from your team? No, I mean, I mean, I, if, if I tell you, if I give you a little bit of background, it might be useful, yeah. And then I'll tell you what happened. Would that be okay, then? Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so, in terms of, you know, I've done expeditions all over the world, yeah. Um, and the the I had never done 
anything to do with North America at all. But I've kind of been interested in it for um, for years, you know. Um, for it, but I was always a little bit well, the big four. I'm not really sure about about approaching North America, and I also had some difficulty with the idea of, a, of, of, of an undiscovered primate being in North America. It was like, how can it be? But I thought it was very, very interesting to do some research because I found evidence of other um, primates in different parts of the world. So I thought it was really worth researching, you know. And I did, um, I did a, a show called China's Wild Man for Monster Quest. And I was very, very interested in, in the Yeren in China. And so they let me do a show there, which was great. And while I was there, I, I spent some time with Jeff Meldrum and looked at the Patterson Gimlin footage with him. And he went through it frame by frame and explained why he thought it was credible. So that kind of got my interest. And then I, I spoke to a few Bigfoot researchers. Um, I think one notably stuck in my mind was Matthew Johnson. And he talked about his own personal encounter. But, you know, the, the line that I, I kept getting when I spoke to people was, you know, if you're going to look, you, you need to adopt a different um, tracking methodology um, to what you normally do, so you research the area, you get local trackers, ecosystem. If you're going to do it, you, you know, um, then a good, possibly a good way to do it would be to speak to somebody who, who you know, Bigfoot comes to you, you don't come to Bigfoot with a classic line. And I even heard it when I was in Samarth, you know, you need, to, you need to be patient and adopt a completely different approach to the one you've already done. So I got in touch with a few people, as I said, and I got in touch with Laurie. And Laurie, um, what interested me was I read her father's book, and uh, he had done 28 years of research in the area of the Pacific Northwest, where there, you know, according to what I had read, there had been a high concentration of um, alleged Bigfoot sightings. So I kind of thought, well, I've got nothing to lose. It would be an easy gig, in the sense that I'd spent three weeks in the jungle in Sumatra for the Finding Bigfoot show, and this will be kind of a break, yeah? It had been a tough year for all sorts of reasons, and I thought, well, I'll go along, and it's it's a lot easier than what I normally do, and we'll just have some fun, you know, and if, 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 if nothing comes out of it, then that's fine. So I had I didn't have great expectations, but I thought it'd be interesting. And I was pleased when I got to the area, because it was very beautiful, um, and I'd spent a lot of time talking to Lori, and I liked her, um, so we, you know, it was, I didn't feel that I had anything to lose by going. So. That's kind of setting the scene, you know, uh, in, in how I felt and what happened. Um, when I got up there, Laurie said that she had, you know, a relationship with these creatures that lived in the forest. And we walked over there, I've discussed this with Laurie, and she said, well, you know, I'll take you to the area where I, I leave food out and things like that for them. And you can kind of judge for yourself. So I got over to the area and, um, you know, I've been told that one of the things that um, Bigfoot researchers hear quite a lot is, big, is, is knocking. And I hadn't seen a lot of that, of, 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 of that activity, certainly when I'd been looking for the retreats of like the around Pen you know, I'd not, I'd not, I wasn't familiar with it, but I'd heard about it and I'd seen the show. Anyway, as soon as I got out there, Laurie starts calling, you know, hello, are you there, like she normally does. And back at me, it came, when I was like, wow, this is freaky, you know. It was a real shock. I, I'm, I'm yeah, really and shocked. the area was a very remote area. So the, so no, the, no, bus the area, the area isn't remote, Daniel. I mean, that, that's the thing. It, it, I mean, it's a remote area, probably by North American standards, but not by my standards. You know what I mean? You're not trekking. Well, okay, I understand. But, so you know, for days in the wilderness. Yeah? Okay. So so, but 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 you believe that they were reacting to her her uh, her, com her her conversation, asking if they're there. Well, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, you think so? That, mm -hmm. there, were, there were two possibilities. Yeah. Either, mm -hmm. Well, there were three. Mm -hmm. They're either reacting to to whether she to, to her voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Either it's another animal. Yeah. Um, a, 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 it, which is which is there in that area, or she's making it up. Yeah. It, it's it, it's one of those three possibilities. Mm -hmm. Now you know, and I said to Laurie at the time because I checked where her feet were and everything else. I said, I really like you, Laurie, but you know, I wouldn't be doing my job as a researcher. If I didn't check whether there was any possibility of, of, of this being faked, yeah. So I saw what she was doing, I saw the way she behaved, and it was a shock. And it was a shock to all of us, you know, on our team. There were people who, you know, one of the guys openly said to Laurie when we were in Seattle, you know, I don't believe in Bigfoot at all. One of the other guys spends a lot of his time 
doing skeptical uh, research, paranormal research. Mm -hmm. So he goes out, and when people say they've got ghosts, he busts the story. Yeah. So it's not a load of what I'm trying to say is it's not a load of credulous people. And I have been on, on expeditions to different parts of the world, and if um, I haven't found something, I've said so. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've, got, mm -hmm. I've said, look, I found nothing. Yeah. And, I, and I, when I've been, for example, to, to the Congo, to the Kira Mbembe, I, I, I very clearly stated what evidence I had and I hadn't found. Mm -hmm. I've been on BBC radio and said, look, I don't believe in the Loch Ness Monster. You know, so I'm mm -hmm. not credulous myself, Amy. This is not, you know, I, I would, I, 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 if I found nothing, I would have said so. So I was really shocked by it. And it really threw me. It really threw me how I'd gone to this area, which is not remote by my standards, maybe my North American standards, but not by my standards. I normally, I can spend days in the jungle and mm -hmm. go to real remote areas. And there was something there. And there was this boom, boom, boom. And it happened to all of us, yeah? So it happened to all of us over the time. Um, we heard growls, all sorts of things, you know, mm -hmm. a, a, over, over days. At different times of the day, uh, uh, not, not so much at night, because it seems to be nocturnal. And we went to different areas as well and got this activity. So mm -hmm. there was no way Laurie could be faking it. No yeah, way. So, so, it, so, it was, so in other words, it was just too, too much randomness to be, yeah, to, yeah. to be something like planned. Yeah, you know? exactly. She would have had to have had a, 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 I mean, you remember I've made films as well. I mean, a lot of my expeditions I've done my own time and own money, but I've made, what, six films? Mm -hmm. And it would have been a, a budget of hundreds of thousands of dollars, yeah? Uh, <laughs> to, to recreate these things. Mm -hmm. it just, impossible mm -hmm. um, and you know there was even responses when we were walking up a tarmac road it would call it would knock at random when it heard us approach yeah mm -hmm. in from a distance so, so did, did you get a feeling that whatever it was was trying to avoid being seen yeah it was trying to avoid being seen but it but it seemed to have a relationship with Laurie and her father which was unique I cannot explain it to this day mm -hmm. it has to be I've had some strange experiences and I don't mind saying it is the weirdest experience of my life. No. It is that. It was that weird. Yeah. yeah. It was not what I expected. No, I, and, and I do understand what you're saying too, because I remember the episode. You know, when you were looking for the rampandic, and you know, you guys got the prints. That, as a matter of fact, I was watching it the other day. Which, you know, I love that stuff, but I was watching well, it. Tell me a rampandic later. So ask me a question because I've got an update that just happened yesterday. Hey, well, well, let's talk about that. But what I wanted to point about that was that. You know, you guys found some prints, but then it turns out that, you know, Dr. Meldrum verified them to be pro possibly the, a bear, a local bear that was there in, in the island of Sumatra. You know, and, you know, the conclusion was to him that you guys, the footprints wasn't, weren't originally around Pendic. So I bet you didn't have any problems with that because you, that's why you sent the prints to an expert to see what it was, right? Well, with Jeff Meldrum, he, the prints we found on, on the Monster Quest show, yes, is the short answer, but the long answer is the prints we found on the Monster Quest show were probably bare, but the original print, which Jeff has a copy of, which mm -hmm. I found in 2001, he says is from the Iran and that, in all probability. Well, yeah. Well, well, yeah, but what I meant by, by, by that, that, that instant was that, you know, you, you send your information to be verified by a professional. You just don't, oh, yeah. you don't just make an assumption that, oh, what I have, you know, you, you believe you have something, but you, you used the right routes to get the information to verify what you have is something. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's really important that you work, that, that any evidence that you find is analyzed independently by credible scientists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tangible evidence. So I have worked with uh, Tom Dissetel, Carl Schuker, Jeff Meldrum, um, David Chivers from Cambridge, Professor Brian Sykes from Oxford, who I know. All of these people I know and all of these people I send Hans Brunner, I send them anything I find. I'm not a scientist, I'm a field researcher. Most of the time I, I do these things on my own time and my money. Um, but anything that is worthy of analysis gets sent off to, to professional scientists to analyze, yeah? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, we get a result, sometimes we don't get a result. That's the way field res research goes. Well, the reason, the, and the reason why I said that was because I felt that at the time when 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 the event happened in Washington, that a lot of people thought that you just did this and just automatically believed that what you had there was something palpable that, you know, they, I don't think people would uh, know the experiences that happened prior to the event and the things you were going through, which I think wasn't really explained. So that's why I also want to get an opportunity to talk about that uh, so you can get an opportunity to clarify some things because I don't, I don't think the whole story was told 
uh, uh, with that incident in Washington. No, absolutely, and and, and you, you know the attitude. I mean, I'll come on to how the image happened in a minute. The attitude about about the, the image was, well, we can't explain what this is, yeah, and we'll come on into more detail of this, but it's worthy of sharing, yeah. Mm -hmm. The 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 um, hair samples that Laurie's father found um, went off to Professor Brian Sykes, and then they're in the lab right now, being analysed, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. They, they, they've gone to him, I spoke to him when we got back, and, and they went off to Professor Sykes, yeah? But the image, um, we're not professional um, people to, to analyze things like this, you know? That's where people who know more about this sort of technology than I do um, get, come in, you know? That's why I was very grateful when you analyzed the film. But we wouldn't, you know, when we sent that thing out, we were careful, I think, um, not to draw any conclusions. We said, look, we, this is what happened to us, yeah? This is worthy of analysis. We want to share it and see what people um, can help us with. Yeah. But the, the, the backstory is the most amazing thing to me, not the image. Yeah, It's the backstory that, which really intrigues me. Mm -hmm. yeah, really now, now, do, you, do you think, you know, uh, once the, the photo was out, do you think that it really got a fair ch uh, chance to be reviewed? Do you think uh, even, you know, some other people looked at it? I mean, I don't know if you have any uh, professionals yet that, that it probably that'll be something later on. I don't know if you, if you send it to other people, but uh, do you think that it really got a fair chance initially, or do you think that it was really more like people took it as, oh, people are assuming it's Bigfoot? Because um, you know, from yourself, I mean, did you ever say it was Bigfoot? I, you know, I, 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 I looked at the stuff that you talked to in, in the other shows, but did you ever mention that it was Bigfoot to anybody? I never. We never said it was Bigfoot deliberately because we didn't want that sort of. Oh, it's just another made-up story type mm -hmm. thing. So, I mean, we, did, we basically said, we don't know what this image is, it looks like a creature, I'm very, very interested in it, and we want to share it, yeah? You can't, you can't, because it, when, as soon as you say um, it, it's that, then people have all these negative connotations. And what I, I've always been very keen on is, is sharing my research very openly, yeah? Mm -hmm. So there was no, there's, there's no, there's no money in it for me, there's no, um, there's no, there's no benefit in it for me. You know, I've, I've done a lot of very credible research all over well, the world. Well, people were saying that, that the reason that was out was to promote your new uh, expedition page and the group that yeah, you guys I, had, you know, so, you I know. Don't need, hmm? I don't need that. I don't you know I don't need that, yeah. I don't need, I don't need a few people to come out and say, look, <laughs> now I've done 15 years of research. It, it, there's no, there was no, there was no benefit in it for me what, uh, whatsoever of any nature, and that was that, that was that really. I mean, there's all sorts of things come out from, oh, he's he's an actor, or he's just making money. Well, no, I've been I've been doing this on my own time, money for years. There's no money, not a cent has changed hands in any way. I'm there, and any evidence I do find is analysed by those researchers, those credible scientists who I've worked with for years and built up relationships with. So, so um, basically, your your idea of this was just to share it. Yeah, just to share it. Just see what people uh, thought about it, you know. And, yeah. and you did send it to professionals, so I guess, uh, well, later on, we're going to get more info on this, or is that is well, that the end of it? Yeah, Laurie, I think Laurie sent sent it off to professionals to be analysed and we'll get more info on that. And also we'll, we'll find out about the hair samples from Professor Sykes. Yeah? Okay. So that's what oh, so, so that's going to be part of the DNA study with Sykes, the hair samples? The hair samples that Laurie, Laurie's father found in 2010 are with Sykes right now. Yeah. Okay. And, and I can confirm that they're in the lab being tested. Oh, awesome. So, 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 another, so not just uh, we have a, a strange photo of something or whatever, we, well, people have discussed all kinds of things. It was a man and whatever it is, but a creature, and and but there are also hair samples from another event that is part of the the sex DNA study. Awesome. Yeah, well, well, well Laurie's dad did 28 years of research in that area. Yeah, so what Laurie's dad died of cancer. Yeah. In 2010, and it was very important to Warren to um, continue that research um, because of her father passing away. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to her dad's tapes, her dad's got some old audio tapes that she played them while we were there. And they're absolutely awesome, yeah? 
absolutely amazing. And he's and when you go into into the, into the area, he's so well respected. That guy, everybody knows him, you know, and everybody yeah. knew Laurie's dad. And and and, and I really felt for Laurie when um, the image came out because she got very upset, not because um, of people saying what it is, but just because there was a certain amount of vitriol about it, and she was like. Well, as if I'd make something up. It was my dad's research, you know. Why would I? Why would I? Why would I destroy and break his reputation and trust? Yeah. yeah. So, it, but you know, I, if I could have one wish about this, it wouldn't be about the image, and we, we will talk about that because I think it's interesting you know, how it happened. But it would be that Professor Sykes manages to pull some DNA off, off off that. It's not my research. It's not my work. It's really important to say. I just have. A good relationship with Professor Sykes, so I was able to sell the samples as soon as I got back. It will be Laurie's dad and Laurie who gets the credit for that, and quite mm-hmm. likely so. Um, but if that comes off, that would be great. And it's a substantial amount of hair, so we should be able to get a, med- a measure off those, and from there, we should be able to get the DNA. And it's either going to go one way or another. It's either going to be something that is, is really special, or it's not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that, that's my point. That research will be open, and everyone will be able to see how that is, how that goes. Yeah, when Sykes publishes his research. So, the science, the, rim, the science, is very carefully handled. Yeah, yeah? Mm-hmm. but an, an image is never going to prove. That anything exists, it's it, it's it's worthy of analysis and a lot of speculation. So, so, so you agree with that factor that 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 a body would be needed to complete the bigger body of evidence? It, 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 I, sure. I don't mean dead, you know, because I know people might go irate, oh, a dead body, but you know, in a sense of if, if you get one, okay, fine, a natural death or whatever. But would a body? It's a body vital part of proving uh, unknown species exists. Let me say, let me let me answer it in three stages, yeah? Okay. So, so no, the first one, yeah? Mm-hmm. Images are great fun, yeah? And they should be analyzed and looked at, but they're not going to prove any creature exists. They're going to be, they're of they're great interest, yeah? But those, if people share their research freely and they do it um, um, in, a, in a positive way, then we should be respectful to all those who share, yeah, number one. Number two, the best hair for field researchers is to get some sort of hair sample or something like along those lines from which we can extract DNA. Because DNA, I think, will push the fold and, is, uh, and will make it, it will move it in public consciousness from being possible to being highly plausible. Yeah, so DNA is very, very intrinsically important. Thirdly, there will always be people who will say, habeas corpus, show me the body. So there will always be people who do that. But the best I can hope for, while I'm doing it part-time, is the DNA. It's not realistic that I'm going to stumble across a body of an orangutan a Yeren in China, or a Bigfoot in America. It's not going to happen. The best thing I can do is get DNA and share that with scientists or casts. Anything like that that adds to the evidential burden. Now, now, do you believe that, that that DNA will be the door to open up then to bring the scientists on board and give you that funding you need then to give, really get that body then? I certainly hope so. I mean, what, years ago, this is, this is going back 10, 12 years ago, when I first got, I found the um, Orang Pendek hairs in Sumatra. They were analyzed by Hans Brunner. And Hans Brunner did the Dingo Baby case. Um, he, so he was good enough to work with the Australian murder. Um, murder squad, yeah, um, and he proved that Lindsay Chamberlain was innocent. And um, now he looked at our hairs from in the orang pendek hairs, and he looked at the structure rather than the DNA, and he was able to distinguish them as being something quite special and unique, yeah. But he got scientific resistance in his area. You know, people people said to him, well, you know, why are you working with these guys? And um, you're going to destroy your reputation. He said, well, this is this is what science is all about, yeah. This is pushing the fold, that's why I want to work. But since then, I think that the scientific community and some of the, uh, some of the respected and braver souls have been able to, um, have been able to say, well, they want to, they want to do this research because this is what good science is all about, pushing the boundaries, challenging evidence, challenging assumptions, and moving it forward. 
with the important caveat. And this is a caveat I quote from Professor Sykes, who, when I was down in Oxford and we spoke about this at length, yeah, so um, his maxim is extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. And I accept that. So we've got to give the best possible evidence we can to these people. But it's got to be tangible. So it's got, it's, it's a physical specimen, it's normally not photographs. Photographs are great, interesting fun. But it's, it, it, it's the DNA I'm after really, Daniel. Okay, so 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 in in your ideal is you know body is fine if you get one, but yeah. you know that you might not be able to transport a body, yeah, to have across the world. But DNA to you is valuable as a stepping stone to get what you need to bring it to reality. Yeah, exactly, a crucial stepping stone. Okay. From there, you see, you, you'll get more funding and research. And in areas like um, Sumatra, where there's a lot of illegal logging going on and the ecosystem's under threat, despite the best efforts of really decent ranges and guides out there, then it becomes very, very crucial, yeah? Very crucial to support yeah. the existence of a very rare creature. So, I'm so, so, so and you said that before, so you believe that uh, if the ramp pending is not found, uh, we might be too late and it might be extinct. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, basically, um, when, I'll give you an example, when I was, I was there one time, I went through this jungle, and I was driving in a jeep in this jungle, and it was half an hour of virgin rainforest. I went back to the same area half an hour, uh, five years later, and that same area was ripped apart, yeah, it was plantations. And can you imagine what it's like driving through, a, through an area for half an hour, which you knew was virgin rainforest, and now it's just flat fields? Wow. It's devastating, devastating. So it's really important. It's not trivial stuff, it's really important. And that ecosystem supports a number of extremely rare and precious species, yeah? I'm not gonna list a bit, list loads, yeah, but here's, you know, a couple of examples of things like tigers, sun bears, yeah? Th those sort of creatures depend on their habitat too. And so, um, in some ways, proving the DNA of the Iraqi pandemic is kind of a wake-up call to put pressure, yeah? Mm. So, so you believe that if, 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 if just like here with the with the Bigfoot uh, uh, issue, you know, you believe that uh, in, in Sumatra, if you if you prove the rank pending exists, it will uh, maybe cost the government to look into logging and protect it from the habitat being destroyed. Well, I think the government are, and, and it's a difficult call. But I think it, I, I hope that it would encourage more funding and better research to, to move mm -hmm. on. You know, I mean, I, there's only so much. Um, amateur field researchers can do, yeah? Mm -hmm. what, what, you know, what I do is I find evidence and then hand the ball over to scientists. Yeah? To, to the real um, scientists? To the professional scientists. Yeah, okay. I'm not a scientist and I, and I wouldn't make any claim. Okay. So, so, so it's for, but, but if we find something tangible, then it encourages those real scientists, um, professional scientists, and, and to, to go out and do, do the job, yeah? It gives them um, something to work with in order to advance the course to do that, and that's where I am. Yeah, that's my that's my reasoning. So I don't so, make money off it. There's, there's, you know, the Iran Pendek have been there seven times. Yeah, it's cost me thousands of pounds of my own time and money. It, it's because I want to do some, if I possibly can, to do the best I can to preserve the species' existence. Now, now, in terms of now of your experience in, in the United States uh, and, and with the with the uh, uh, event that happened in Washington, now, mm -hmm. do you feel now, uh, based on that event, that uh, the search of Bigfoot uh, is an important one too now? Yeah, definitely. I want to answer this question because I think it's a very important question right now. If I may, can I just tell you what happened when we got the, the image of the creature? And then I'll answer your question. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I told you about all that activity that had gone on, yeah, in, in, uh, in that area. And um, Laurie, Laurie said, well, you know, we, we could always try sleeping by, sleeping by the campfire to see if anything happens, yeah? And we had virtually no expectation. There wasn't a lot of, of activity. There was the, only, the only mammals we saw 
really the, 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 were, were chipmunks, and that was it, yeah? There were no raccoons or anything else around there, mm-hmm. which was, you know, unusual in itself, I'm told, yeah? But there was nothing else. So we, we decided to put... We, we, most of our camera traps were set up in the area, yeah, where, where, um, where, where the creature were. We, I think we put a couple up in that area, just a really low expectation of, of, um, of, of what, um, what, it, what it would be, yeah, what it might be. And, um, you know, the next, and, and so we slept by the campfire, Laurie and I, we fell asleep, the other guys went to their tents and they were asleep, yeah. And the next morning we woke up and we saw that image. And it wasn't like, we didn't immediately check the camera traps because we had like no expectation, as I said. We checked them after we had coffee and had some breakfast and all of those sort of things. And then we looked at it we were really surprised we had it there. So it was, it was really shocking. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, again, it was, you know, it was a really strange experience. But those sort of things happened all week. But, but that was the only time we got something tangible on the camera. Now, now the, the video, the, the, that one second video, is that going to be analyzed also? Yeah, it needs to be properly analyzed. Yeah, especially. yeah, yeah. because you know the, the polemic of that is that you know they think it's somebody smoking. Uh, others said that you know it could have been that the person was grabbing a piece of of of, uh, of wood that was burning, and that's why you see the smoke. So it's a lot of different things that people said. Others said it's just the guy you know out there with his the uh, you know poncho or his sleeping bag on top. So yeah, yeah, no, I understand that. Let me say, first of all, I don't mind people thinking those things, yeah? Mm-hmm. I understand why they might. But it's very hard to believe it's a creature, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's a big leap, you know? Mm-hmm. Sort, of, sort of like, is it, I mean, because it, right, it was right next to us, yeah? Uh, and what um, particularly disturbed me, this is, a, this is a personal observation, is that um, I, I, don't, I don't feel hugely comfortable about it getting that close to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? so, so it kind of freaked you out when you saw that, day, how close it was. Yeah, I mean, I've slept in the wild and I've slept, you know, um, in different parts of the world, you know, being very, very close to tigers and stuff like that. And I've, you know, I've spent a lot of time in the Congo as well. Mm-hmm. So I've seen gorillas and things like that. You know that. But I didn't like it, but it was right over as much. Now, let me say right now, you know, I understand why people think it might be other things. But... Three things I can say with some certainty is the fire had gone down. It was only me and Laurie by the, by, by the fire. Everybody else was asleep. Neither of us were wandering about in sleeping bags. It just didn't happen, yeah? I never smoke in a sleeping bag and haven't done since I started smoking. So, you know, in my opinion, it can be none of those things, and I was there, yeah? I was there, and Laurie was there. And we all have those experiences. The whole team had those experiences. There were seven people there. And... And we all came to the same conclusion, you know. It was it was it was totally strange. It was it, 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 and when I think about it now, Laurie was when she saw the, the image, she couldn't even look at it. I remember looking like that, you know, away from the camera trap with her hand because it freaked her out even more. And she wanted to go. She was for going home, you know. You know that. That, that that day, she, she was like that. Well, well, it's amazing to think that if it was something for it to come into the camp, right, you guys, yeah. and I hear it, that, that has to be a little bit disturbing if it was something. Totally disturbing. It defies all the logic. I mean, a lot of people have said, you know, why are you sticking up camera traps in camp? And I totally agree with them. It defies all the logic. But, you know, we thought we'd just give it a try because what have we got to lose? And loads of the rest of our other camera traps were up there. And lo and behold, that's what happened. But sometimes, sometimes it's fortune and luck and going against the rules that gets you things, you know? Yeah. And no. that was, was weird. Now, what do you think about all this paranormal thing with Bigfoot? I mean, um, I even saw one comment <laughs> that, you know, the probably the reason why the camera didn't capture uh, the, the creature was because it was you know, coming in and out of uh, existence and that it only let you see whatever it wanted you to see. I mean, I know you've heard the stories about Bigfoot being able to uh, supposedly vanish or become invisible and, and, and all the other things. So what do you think about all those things like that? I want to be really respectful of other people's opinions, yeah? Mm-hmm. But I don't believe in, I just don't believe in shape-shifting entities or ghosts like that you know it's just not my sort of thing i mean have you had anything weird happen to you out in the jungle somewhere have you ever thought maybe this is something out of 
the realm of a science that I don't understand? Have you ever had anything like that? No. <laughs> so, so in all the years that you've been out in the middle of nowhere, you've never experienced anything strange. No. No. You've always, you were always able to understand that it probably was an animal or something that yeah. you thought doing something weird. Yeah, I mean, I, I just these are real animals to me, or they're, or they're nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, if people want to believe in, I don't know, shape-shifting entities or ghosts or other stuff, then good luck to them, you know. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll sit and listen to the story like the best of them, you know. We can have a mm -hmm. drink together, we can sit around the fire and they can tell me their ghost stories. But as to whether I believe them, personally, no. It's a, it's a real animal or it's nothing. So, so unequivocally, you have never experienced anything weird in your time doing this type of research? Well, like ghosts, you mean? Well, I mean anything, anything weird that you felt that is not the norm. No, they're either real animals or they're nothing. Okay, perfect. Now, and great that you're talking about DNA studies because that's going to lead me to the next question. We, we uh, people are, are feverishly uh, talking about the the science DNA study due to the you know the, he's a scientist uh, geneticist with uh, great credibility uh, in the community itself, but let's talk about you know your opinion or your idea of the Melville Ketchum DNA so the American DNA study you know mm -hmm. have you, what you know what is your feeling about that what have you heard what how, how, how do you feel do you think that because um, from recent reports. Uh, they're saying that it's soon, it, it'll be close, or, or whatever that means, that, you know, eventually that we will see, uh, you know, the the results from this. And also claims have been made already that uh, from from her, from her, the camp itself, from the Middle Captain DNA study, uh, because of, of a supposed leak by Dr., uh, I can't remember, the Russian scientist, I can't remember his name. Eagle Bird said. Yeah, Eagle Bird said, uh, unfortunately, it was an intentional, and they did admit that it was an intentional release, and she made a statement saying that uh, she believes, uh, you know, from what she has uh, as information from her study, that this, uh, the creature that we know as Bigfoot now, is a hybrid from a mixture of humans and, and a new uh, hominid species that happened sometime 15,000 years ago. You know, what is your idea on that? What do you think, you know, do you think that her DNA study will also uh, be pivotal in this, uh, you know, quest to prove Bigfoot is real? Um, let me start by saying I want people to succeed, yeah? So I'm starting with the caveat that I would like her research to succeed and I'd like it to be proved, yeah? So... Because, you know, I don't, I, I, I really say that I'm a believer in Bigfoot. I want it to be proved and exist because I think it would be hugely exciting, yeah? I think it's very difficult because unless her paper passes peer review, it won't be accepted as credible science. That's, that's, that's the be and end of it all. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, and, it, and, and I think even Melba Caption would admit that it hasn't come out in the best way, you know? Leaks on Facebook and things like that aren't mm. the best way to publish science. Peer review, scientific papers are the only way to, to, to um, send out science. But in, in modern in, in modern days, peer review is the best way. So, um, with Melba Ketchum, I think she's up against it because of the way it's come out, yeah? And I, and I also think, I don't, it's quite a small community who would do her peer review. So, um, I think Todd Dissertel's point, and I, you know, when you have conversations in, that he's had, doesn't know anybody, I think my understanding is he doesn't know anybody who's been involved in that, whereas I know he's working with Sykes, um, uh, and, and they've shared data, um, indicates to me that it will be difficult for her to get um, peer-reviewed, but I do want her to succeed, don't get me wrong, so mm -hmm. if she succeeds, brilliant, but I think if you're asking me to put money on who's going to have the best chance of success, well, it has to be Sykes, the world's leading geneticist, who's going to be peer-reviewed by, by his peers, and they're either going to say, yes, it's good science, or no, go back to the drawing board, or Sykes himself is going to say that. Now that Mel Ketchum's going to find it difficult, I think. Mm. But, you know... Do you, think, do, do you think she'll get credit for her contribution into it? Do you think that, 
you know, uh, some some people have uh, stated that that you know she has discovered uh, a, a new technique, you know, in uh, you know, in the genome itself to to figure out what what you know in terms of Bigfoot itself. So you know, do you think that maybe she will get credit with credits due because uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, too many 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 people are taking. Uh, the stuff, the rumors and things that have been said about her, and you know, some things have been leaked, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but you know, to you give her credit, it wasn't really the idea for that to happen. Unfortunately, it was not handled a certain way. So, uh, do you think she'll get credit as being a contributor to the the finding and proof? Well, she will do it if if, um, if, if the peers who review her paper accept that what the, the uh, new sequences are credible science. It, it's a supposition, Damien, that depends on whether she succeeds mm -hmm. in, in her conclusions. You know, if she does, and that technique's proved to be revolutionary, whatever her outcomes, then of course she'll get credit for it. And so she should, yeah? I am conscious of the fact that it's been a big five years of, of her life, yeah? And it's been a huge amount of her time. So I do feel for her in that, yeah? So I, I'm not, um, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to knock her. As I say, I want her to, 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 to succeed, but... I still think it's most likely that Sykes is, is going to be the person who does it more than her. So, so Adam Davies puts his money on Sykes? Totally. Okay. And you guys are lucky in North America because you have Bigfoot on your doorstep, yeah? I have to travel thousands of miles. To, to, to research those sort of creatures. You guys have it there, yeah? Which is marvellous. And I'm not saying that um, <clears throat> you should spend every waking moment doing it, but I'd spend a lot of time before I was out in North America. Doing so it. do you think that the, that the researchers here in America should be more unified in terms of that? Do you think that, that information is not being shared like it should with one another? Uh, you know, do you, do you think something, do you think it's right for, for I mean, Everybody has the right to keep this stuff to themselves, but you think that that is it's fair if you want to prove that Bigfoot exists? I've never, I've never, um, if you're a good field researcher, you should be sharing your, your, your information with your peers, yeah? Mm -hmm. I've always shared any information that I have, any of my research and any of the creatures I've looked for, very freely and openly with anybody who wants to have it, because I'm only interested in the success of, of improving the research, yeah? Um, it's unique to, to, to North America that people keep information to themselves, I have to say. Um, different parts of the world and different cryptids, um, the information is normally shared. Yeah? So mm -hmm. um, I think that research, field researchers should share their, 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 their research freely and openly without motivation from personal gain, particularly of a monetary nature, which is not right. They should be sharing it with other people for universal benefit. I'm quite altruistic about that, and um, I don't think you should keep your research hidden. Why? Mm. Why not share it with others? And why? There's a specific reason. If you, if you, if you are keeping an area safe because you want to protect uh, a creature or an environment, like I understand a lot of um, Native Americans have done, and some people have done um, in exercises where they wanted to preserve it because they've been worried about its personal welfare, then I can understand that, and that's a different matter. But if you're doing it because you want to make a load of money, then that's completely wrong and immoral. Yeah, but but my question is, you know, many want to prove Bigfoot is real. Mm -hmm. And but and then why hide? The, why hide the evidence you have? Well, I, I totally agree with you. Well, I mean, if, if you want to prove it's real, why why, why not share the data? I, I don't have any problem with that. Everything everything that we found, we shared mm -hmm. completely openly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything I found with the around Fedek, I've shared. Everything I found with the other things I've looked for, I've shared. Yeah. I have not asked for a penny for anybody to, to do that. I've shared it because because I'm interested in, in expanding the argument. So when we share the image, it's because I'm, I'm I know it, I know that um, you know as I said to you when we spoke, I know it wasn't made up. Um, I, I, I'm usually confident it wasn't any of us or somebody smoking or whatever else. Yeah, I think it was a real creature. So I share the image because I'm really interested in what other people think it might be, and I want to advance that line of argument. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm going to have to filter out loads of pokey ideas, but I'm interested in people who might say, well, actually, I think it's this, because mm -hmm. that helps me understand it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm interested in. Yeah? So, so, so at the same time, it is a quest for you 
Yeah. Because yeah. especially when you don't understand what you have, so you want yeah. you want to get yeah. to that fine finality. So just like anybody else that's seen a Bigfoot that wants to show the world that it's real, yeah. the quest is getting that evidence out there. So yeah, by, to the right people, naturally. So you can yeah. say, okay, hey, we do have something here. Then we need to look yeah. at this further. Yeah, that's what discovery is all about, isn't it? I mean, discovering mm -hmm. new species, new animals, your, your curiosity is aroused, and you want to you want to share it with us. If I felt feel like I've taken something as far as it, I, it can go with with my skills, knowledge, and, and abilities, I want it to move on to other people. That's mm -hmm. like, for example, when um, you analysed that the, the the images, I was really interested because um, it took me leaps forward in understanding about about what had happened. So I was really grateful to you when you did it because I was able to look at it and think, wow, you know, look at that. Well, I thought it, I thought it, need, it needed to give a fair chance. I thought that it, it unfortunately, you know, it, you know, you, the the Bigfoot community here is a little bit harsher than any, and I know you understand that already. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I wanted to give it a fair chance because, I, like anybody else, I am, I am, I, I think something's out there, I, and I want to prove that it's real. And I thought that it needed to get a fair chance to be looked at in a way, and that's why I superimposed the photos and did certain things to it, so people could see for themselves, look, there's something here, it looks like a humanoid, it has a humanoid figure, but is it really what we think it is? You know, it's up to you to decide. I never said in my videos anywhere that it was a Bigfoot, some people confuse that too. Uh, I never I never said that, I said, I, I'm showing to you, at the end I, I did a conclusion, I don't know what it is, I mean, it looks like a muscular to me, I, I, I made a point, I, I did certain measurements based on things I know, you know, perspective drawing, so I made some measurements that gave me an idea, I could have been, I could be off by inches, you know, uh, of what I, the measurement I made, but I figured that the way it was bending down, the body that I saw, the things that I could see there was five foot tall, so I generated from that idea that if it stood up, based on a regular sized man, typically the legs are about three feet long, typically, you know, Proportionally, the body has, you know, certain proportions, so it would make the creature, if it stood up, even though it's lanky, even though to you it doesn't look that big, it, to me it might have been taller than what people thought. That's my view of it. That's my personal opinion. But do I know really what it is? No. And we go back to that again. Here in America, the search for Bigfoot has been a constant uh, 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 view of blurry pictures, insufficient videos. Some say some video is good, some say uh, it's not. Photos, hair samples, all that stuff, and yet there's the you know that this this divide on you know one side you know people say it's an entity you know from another world. The, the other say is a is a is a primate like creature that looks human and has certain human characteristics. Now, it, to you, you know, based on on all the things that you've done out there, you know, in terms of research, I'm talking about going out into the woods, going out into jungles, and seeing, seeing things like that. Do you think there's a there's a possibility that such a species of creature could exist and just roaming the woods of North America and just really not get properly photographed or properly filmed or caught, even. Well, that was the problem I had when, when, when it took me a while to go um, into Bigfoot research because I thought well, it's not like the Orang Bendek where you've got a remote population um, of creatures in an area where people don't have that level of technology and isn't as densely populated. Um, but, you know, my experience is now... Um, say to me that, yeah, I, I don't have any doubt that Bigfoot exists. Um, it's just a matter of, 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 of definitively proving it, you know. And, you know, people have taken these images. The Patterson Gimlin footage is, is very good, you know. I, I, I think that's, well, I do think that's genuine. And, and, and um, Laurie showed um, the picture that we took to Bob Gimlin very recently, um, you know, on, on our trip. So she, um, she, she showed it just, just, just a few weeks ago. I, I, but yeah, there are some. It is difficult if you look at it from um, an objective point of view, and I can understand why people say, "Well, you know, North America, 
Um, they really, should, with, the, with, with the equipment they've got and the amount of researchers they've got, they, they should have got the evidence by now. But having been there now, I can understand it more. I mean, you, you are talking, in North America, you're still talking about vast forests for, where most people don't traverse to Americans. I think, I think by and large, you, you know, on average, you, you never go more than 20 minutes walk from a trail um, on average in, in North America um, as a cultural thing. And you're talking about a population that's very low in density, um, probably spread out in either, uh, in either slightly solitary or small family groups over vast ranges. So it becomes plausible, and it becomes more plausible once you see the habitat. So now I've been up to Washington State and seeing the wilderness is there, and, and seeing how it, uh, um, how, it, how it might behave, then, you know, I, I don't have any doubt that it probably exists. So, but so, I, I, so, I, so this experience changed your view of what you thought, because you thought yourself, because you said it just now, you said it, you know, so many researchers in America and the technology, uh, yeah. uh, they should have found it, you know, you, you, you well, believe that at the moment. Have, I would have hoped they would have found it. I did want to believe in Bigfoot. I, I was going on the assumption that I wanted to believe in it, but it was only when I, you know, and, and I'd spoken to a lot of researchers who I liked very much, you know, like when I was in Sumatra, for example, I'm not, I built a good friendship up with Cliff Barrettman, uh, and, I, and, I, and, I, I, and you know, and, and all of those guys, you know, Bobo, and I, I thought they were all sincere and nice people. Um, I, and I've met a number of researchers, and Jeff's a great guy, who are all believe in it. But I think, you know, the leap is when you see it for yourself, and you see how plausible it is. When I was out there with Laurie, um, you know, that, that, that I, it, it, it changed me from prob being probable to definite, you know? Yeah. The, now let's go back to let, let me talk about Laurie a little bit now, you know. Mm -hmm. Two months before he passed away. Wow. Yeah. Did he did did he say anything to you in terms of I mean what what was the last conversation you had with your father? Was was there anything about Bigfoot? Was it just you um, know regular conversation? That's emotional. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Actually, the last day that I saw my dad, um, he was in the hospital at the VA hospital in Seattle. And um, that was the day he couldn't talk anymore. And the doctors, his team of doctors came in and they told me that uh, my father could hear me. And they told me that he was very concerned about his book being public because he was slipping away and he knew he wasn't going to be able to finish publishing, you know, finish writing a book and have it published, even though my father and I, we were working together to finish the book because his strength grew weaker. But his team of doctors stressed his concern to me that he wanted to make sure that the world knew the truth and that Bigfoot does exist. And so my father was laying in the bed, in the hospital bed, and. I um, said out loud so my father could hear me. I said, well, I read the, the first page and I read the last page and I think the book is, is ready and I'm going to make sure that your book gets published. That's awesome. That was, that was the last conversation about it. So he passed away knowing that I was going to fulfill this promise and that's why it's a promise because it was the last time I told my father. I did promise them I would publish this book. Everything is asleep up here. It moves up here apparently. There's not even any birds here. out here. They're further down where they got food, I imagine. Nobody up here but me. Beautiful sunny day. Can't complain about that. My dad was very old school, and this is his tape recorder that he would bring into the woods. And this is 
one of the states it says movement in the den first sign that it was it can be aggressive <laughs> I'm sorry Vaughn no that's okay like okay. I said I um and these are two photos that are of dens in this area. My brother and I still, to this day, even after two years, mm -hmm. cannot find them. And mm -hmm. here's another okay. one. So you see there's a large tree. More knocking. Oh, he's knocking. <laughs> Plus is knocking. And there's this area right here that has an oh, opening. yeah. Okay. My dad found this den from going in the area where Marge's dogs wouldn't. They got scared out of the woods. Rocks were thrown. He went in that area where the dogs wouldn't, followed along the riverside, followed the deep bumps of mm -hmm. whatever it may be in the woods. And this is what he came across. So there's this one, and there's this one. And the tree that I've come across is because clearly the sound. Yes. He's telling me where he is right now. Yeah. I don't know why. There's but definite. He's telling me. And it's possible because I've come down here from when I was a little girl. I was six. Mm -hmm. When I first started coming down here and going fishing with my dad. So. Well, all I know is there is knocking from that tree, and I'm not walking up there, and. I would, holy crap. Holy shit. Okay, he's really pissed off right now. Okay, we're going to go. Okay. Um, that I, was a big growl. And yeah, it was loud. We, okay. I'll see ya. Okay, well, I don't think I'm going to be playing the audio of my dad right now. Okay, well, I'm going to shut this off for a minute. Oh. I'm sorry, Bonnie. I put you through this. Scary, scary. Here. I'm going to turn that off. No, I'm going to keep it going. Okay. More knocking. Okay, get in the car, Bonnie. <laughs> there is knocking from that tree, and I'm not walking up there, and I would... Holy crap. Holy shit. Okay, it's really... You met Lori, and unfortunately, Lori here has a little bit of an issue with her credibility from past other things, you know. Now, do you know about those issues yet that she explained those to you? Or, you know, because I, I don't really want to go into, you know, saying knock her down or anything like that, but, you know, she has, you know, some people think that, you know, she she's made some crazy assumptions about what Bigfoot is. Now, based on your experience now meeting Lori, do you think that she is a credible researcher? Yeah, Laurie's very credible. Laurie's really genuine, yeah. Um, she's not a scientist, mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I think that she would be the first person to say that. Mm -hmm. um, she's sort of intuitive and, and she's sort of empathic. She has, she's very sort of, she's a very caring, feeling person. Um, and, and yeah, no, she's completely genuine. You know, in, in my in my job um, previously, I spent seven years cross-examining people in courts. Yeah, for mm -hmm. a living. That's what I did. So, whereas I can't always spot somebody who's not telling the truth, nobody can, and anybody who's just otherwise is not, is not telling the truth themselves. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I, I cross-examined Laurie very carefully and used those techniques, and she's completely genuine, and she's completely honest about her dad's, her dad's, um, her dad's research. So, I don't, I, I don't have any problem with, 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 and I've seen it for myself, Amy, mm -hmm. um, more importantly. So, um, people may be reticent about some of Laurie's claims, and I understand that. But, but uh, having been to that area and, and seen those things, Laurie's genuine. And Laurie was very upset when, on to, I mean, you know, Laurie was really, really shocked, and we all saw she was shocked when, when we got the image on the trail cam. I told you how she couldn't even look at it, and she mm -hmm. wanted to go home. She wanted to stay. We were still there for another 10 days. L let's talk about the trail cam photo. Okay. The, 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 you know, that caused a lot of debate, a lot of, you know, issues here, people were saying that it was hoax, that it was a person, that, you know, it was smoke and all kinds of stuff. Right. What you saw there, I mean, 
are you do you think that possibly that is what we call a bigfoot i believe so i believe that the creature that i have built a relationship with in the area i know is more than one because i have been in the forest several times and i've heard sounds in other directions letting me know there's there's more than one and i believe that on the second night that we stayed the night there I decided we should sleep outside because I didn't want to sleep inside the tent not knowing what's walking around outside and like psyching myself up and it's really just a raccoon and I'm scared so uh, Adam slept outside with me by the campfire and I believe that it came in to take a close look at me and it did <laughs> It took a yeah. close look at me. Did did that did that freak you out when you saw that? Knowing that? Mm. I mean, seeing the photo and then knowing that you're yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I I couldn't look at the photo for more than a moment because I could see the clear details of the massive muscles in the back. I mean, she wanted to go on there too. Well, I, I mean, uh, to me, it would have been something scary myself. I, I could imagine because, uh, and that's another thing I want, I, I want to talk about too, because people think <laughs> that, 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 that before that, Laura's mm-hmm. genuine, yeah, and she's genuinely proud of her dad's research, 28 years of research. Okay. So she's not going to screw things up, yeah. She may make, I mean, she may make, st- make statements that some people don't like, but, but whether you like them or not, she's genuine in what she does, and I believe mm-hmm. in yeah. Awesome. Now. People made that that scene seem simple, but if something actually was there, you know, and you were out in the woods, I bet anybody, I think anybody, anybody out, uh, any grown man or woman to wake up in the morning and look in your trail cam and find something that you know there wasn't anybody in your cam hovering yeah. over you, looking yeah, at where totally. your lo- your location. Yeah, yeah, totally, it did. I mean, and we tried it the next night. We tried it, and Laurie went to sleep pretty much straight away. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like lying there, and I'm thinking, I'm a crazy, I'm, I'm lying here. <laughs> Laurie's asleep, everybody else is in their tent, and I'm lying here, waiting to see if this thing comes in. Oh again. my goodness. <laughs> it's like, I'm lying there, and oh, I don't know, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm saying, I'm like, I'm like going, oh, please go to sleep, please go to sleep. <laughs> wow. So it bothered you that much, the next night you were like waiting to see if you could see something. Right, eventually I went to sleep, but it did bother me. Now, now that, that you have that experience, are you ever going to come back to America and go out there with other researchers to look for Bigfoot again? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think when we first spoke, I was a bit like, oh, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the answer to your question is, yeah, I'm going to come out again. Oh, again, yeah. Mm-hmm. I like it. You, so you, you like it? So, so, you, so you, even with all the trouble you got into <laughs> in the debate, you know, you still liked hanging out over here in America and looking for big Yeah, fun. yeah I, I mean, I mean I, I'm going to come back, yeah, because I know that it's a real creature, so I'm interested in it. Uh, and Damien, frankly, if I can survive being shot at in the Congo, I can survive some insults from a few years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you have no worry. You're not worried about uh, about getting hurt in America. <laughs> no. Let, let me, okay. Now, 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 when, 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 if and when you ever do come back, you know, do you have an idea now where you want to research? Do you, do, do you think that uh, being here, and you, you learn something, and do, is it will it be back in Washington, or do you think maybe that you're looking at other possibilities? Well, my initial preference would be to go back to Washington because I've got so many good results there. Mm-hmm. You'd be mad not to, wouldn't you? You know, mm-hmm. so you'd want to go back there. Um, and obviously, um, <clears throat> you know, I'd want to, I'd want to continue that research with, with Laurie if I possibly could. Um, mm-hmm. and, and obviously, Laurie and I have a, have a, have a good relationship, so. Um, so that's, Man, that's I, that's, well, the, the reason I'm asking is I want you to come to Florida so we can look for the skunk ape together. Yeah, absolutely. That, 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 you know, there's been a lot of activity with the skunk ape recently here, and even I don't know if, you, if you've been on the on the groups, but uh, yeah, there's yeah. been this uh, terminal image by Stacy Brown. Have you heard about that? Yeah. yeah. So interesting oh, stuff yeah, kind of happening in Florida. Yeah. So I, I'm def- I, I, I'll definitely I'll definitely have a go to the skunk ape. I'm kind of moving my focus, I think, a little bit away from um, Southeast Asia, more towards the West, because 
I've done stuff in Africa, Russia, Mongolia, China, a lot of Southeast Asia, but it was all towards the East from Africa onwards, yeah? I've not done a lot of stuff towards the West, yeah? So, so I kind of wanted to move in that direction more. Mm-hmm. So I'm very interested in going that way rather than East. I'm more interested in going West. <laughs> so I've been contacts in Canada and in North America and all of those sort of places because that's kind of where I want to um, do a lot more research. Especially now I've got, we use an, an English expression, the bit between my teeth. So especially now I'm interested in stuff in, in, in America, then I'm more likely to go in that direction. That's my plan at the moment, um, to go more that way, because of, because of, because of what um, I'm fa- I've found. And you know, there'll be a ma- if Sykes does come out with something and it's still in it, there'll be a massive leap. In, in it. Like, North America is, is right now is the place to be. I mean, I'm still excited by other areas. I mean, Cliff and I have been doing some research together on the environment on the Iran Pandek and Yeah, this is the hair. This is the, the tree where the hairs were found in 2009. And basically, I saw um, a trail of an orang pandak coming up here, very clear trail. And when we did that, we actually we actually found the hairs here, actually here. On the phone, John found them. Um, well, the trackers found them here. And then subsequently, we sent them to Lars Thomas and, and to Tom Gilbert. And they and Lars's conclusion that it was, un, it was, was it was unknown primate. Not found any here today, but what we're going to do with anyway is set up a camera trap there. So the theory behind it is the orang pendek will come down the trail here. If this is a post which it uses for scratching because it's got parasites and it's familiar with it, we'll scratch the post and we get a good picture of it there. So there's logic behind it. And we're probably going to leave this camera up here for a considerable amount of time. So although it doesn't seem to be walking through in recent in recent vicinity in the last um, last week or two, it could well come at any time, and so we hope to capture it again in the future. Um, yesterday, um, we, we got a eyewitness report, and there was a, a orang pendek track which looked exactly like my print. You know, no way. And analysed as being from an unknown primate. That happened yesterday, so nobody else knows that, Damien. You just know it now. Wow. Um, I, I, I looked at it. I looked at the photograph this morning, and that's just come out. We're getting that cast and we're really excited, which is awesome. So, so I'm still very interested in that area and I still have like, researchers out there, but I'm also interested in, in kind of doing North America as well. So if, if you could give any new research, I mean, there's a lot of people interested in the Bigfoot phenomenon. There's a lot of young people. I, I even had the other day a young man join my group. Who's, uh, he was about 18 years old, you know, and uh-huh. and he's interested in, 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 in this stuff to research Bigfoot. What would be the advice that you would give these young generation that, you know, you know we know that the Bigfoot, uh, ev- I mean, the Bigfoot, uh, Finding Bigfoot show has created a, you know, uh, you know, a snowball effect that, a lot of people are interested in, in, in the phenomenon big for the DNA studies, all that stuff, as in the news. What would be the advice you would give these new researchers uh, t- to be able to, you know, go out in the field and, and do it safely at the same time, but learn and develop a good technique to, to their research? Well, the first thing that they want to do is, is to go with somebody... Is to look is to look at the researchers in their field, particularly in their locale, and go with somebody who you respect. Yeah. So look at what they've done, look at what look at their background. Go with somebody that you respect. Yeah. So somebody who you think you're going to go with. Ask them if you can join. Be polite when you go on their on their field trips or their expeditions. Learn from them. Yeah. Learn the right tracking techniques and methodology. Go with more than one. So go with a couple and see the differences because people approach these things in different ways. There's not always a right and wrong answer. And then get out there and do your own after you've done a couple and learn, yeah? And, and go to areas that interest you. So, in synopsis, go, go, on a, go with a couple of good researchers, learn their techniques, then refine your own. I mean, I have um, two small children. Well, one isn't so small now. My son is 13 and my daughter's 8. And I teach them how to track animals. I've been teaching them how to track animals since they were, since they were 2 and 3, you know, when they first went out into the wilderness. 
now I, I mean, and I regularly practice that with them so I keep my skills up. But they can track deer for miles over moors, no problem, you know. My daughter's hard as nails and she can do that, yeah. <laughs> and so um, go out there and do it as much as you can. And it's great fun, it's, it's enormous, it, it's really rewarding. You might don't, and also be, be prepared for the disappointment, be prepared for sitting in the wet and the mud, be prepared to suffer, because it's not. <laughs> this, this sort of stuff that we're talking about is the pinnacle of things. Remember, I've been doing this, what, 15 years, Damien, and most of the time when I go to places, I find squat, yeah? I get covered in leeches or bitten or shot at. I get mud, yeah? I'm exhausted, I'm hungry. I get things that would make a billy go puke, you know? <laughs> and all those things. Um, so they, they need to be prepared to think that it's not just going to be, oh, great, you know, here, here be dragons and here we are, you know? It's, it's hard slug, but they should do it because I've had some of the most amazing experiences of my life, you know? I've watched, I've watched the gorilla um, pick its nose from the top of the tree as I've rode across the lake, yeah? I've been the, one of the first people to climb mountains. I've, I've crossed the Gobi Desert with, with a couple of crazy Mongolians who were half drunk, you know. I've done all of those amazing, I've had some amazing adventures. Things that, you know, memories to last a lifetime. I don't regret a single one of them, yeah? And it's been incredible. So they should do it because I'm really proud of, of, of my adventures in a good way. So do it, you won't regret it. But do it, do it by stages. You gotta you, you gotta crawl before you run then. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Learn the skills. Learn your skills and do it gradually. Okay. Now, what is next for Adam Davies? Can you talk about what is next for you? Or, or right now, what? next for Adam Davies is coming back towards North America. Yeah. Uh, and do more of such stuff because I'm really interested in it. That's the plan at the moment. What I, you know, things can change depending on um, events that happen. Yeah. So I just told you. I mean, you know, I literally got a rank for that print yesterday, mm -hmm. which is dead exciting. So you, you just don't know what. So this happen. is a world premiere for 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 people. You saying this right now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah, with I mean, Cliff Baragman. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We, 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 you know. Um, we, we, that's being cast at the moment, so hopefully that will come out. So, you know, but, we, but, but new evidence of those things is being found all the time. So, it, and that's really, really exciting. It's great. Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes I react to circumstances, say if I get a really good lead somewhere. You know, say I got a brilliant eyewitness report and I knew it was true, I'd want to go there. You know, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, it's more likely North America, simply because of all the things that I've found. You know, and I'm, I'm, I can't tell you how fingers crossed I am about Sykes' research, because that, that is the moment for you guys. If, if, it, if, it, if it happens, that's the moment, yeah? If it doesn't, I'll be very disappointed, and, but I'm sure that everybody will eventually pick themselves up. But if he does come up with the goods, then, you know, this thing will roll big. What? Okay, let's say that it does happen. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's say that Sykes proves that, you know, Bigfoot is there's DNA and we have something here. Yeah. What does that mean to you? What will that mean to you? What will that oh, change for you? Oh, it'd be marvelous, wouldn't it? I mean, think about it. What it means for everybody. All those people who spend years of researching and they get the DNA. Mm -hmm. the, as I say, there will always be some people who say hey, it's cool, but it would be a massive leap and vindication for all those people's hard work and effort. Because, because you know, most of those people, they, they may argue, they may have different opinions. And in North America, they have a lot of different opinions. <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen it. But, you know, as one voice, they could say, fantastic, yeah? And it would be great for that to happen. It would be marvelous. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I would be usually pleased, as I would be if, if, if any of these primates were. You know, my personal baby has always been the around pandemic. You know that. Mm -hmm. But I, I would be usually pleased if... if um, if, if, if Bigfoot was proved. And I don't care who whose hair clump it is, you know. I don't care if it's Bob's, Pete's. I'd like it to be Laurie's because obviously uh, I have that relationship with Laurie. Uh, and I, but so it'd be great. But if it's somebody else's, good. Yeah, let's just have the DNA. So, from what I understand, Adam Davies believes, thinks that Bigfoot is real. Yeah. 
I have no problem with Sandy. <laughs> you you have no problem. I mean, you know that you know, and and you say you know that the Oran Pendek is out there. You do you still yeah. believe that he's that he's out there? That the Oran Pendek is walking around in the island of Sumatra? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, as I say, print yesterday. Yeah. So 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 now, and and one last question because I I think we we've been talking for a while okay. now. With, with your experiences... And I need a cigarette, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're done, but we'll be done in a second. My last question. With your experiences with the Orion Pendic and now your experience with uh, this event in Washington, mm. what do you... How, you know, does it, does it confirm to you that out there there's more things that we, that we don't know about than, that, we, that we think we do? Yeah, I, I, I have traveled all over the world looking for unknown species, yeah? Sometimes I've found something, sometimes I haven't. On both, on when I have, I, I've said so, and I've said so. But definitely there are unknown, uh, unknown creatures out there. And, 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 you know, and people should look for them. In, in, in Sumatra, it's very altruistic because if we need to preserve the habitat. In North America, it's just fascinating. It's fascinating to know what, what, what that is. I'm absolutely intrigued by it. Really am. Now I've been to North America and had a look. I'm really, really fascinated by it. It's clearly very intelligent, and how it and how it remains elusive is extremely interesting. As it's, you know, from a tracking point of view. So I'd like to go into the into the woods and do a lot of tracking. I really would. I'd really get off on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Adam. I really appreciate you taking the time. I know that you're a, a busy person and. And thanks again for you know for, for sharing this information. And people are going to be amazed when they hear about this Rampendic uh, new new sighting and, and and the and the footprint. Oh, and one more thing: is that going to be sent also to uh, Dr. Meldrum too? Is he going to get an opportunity to look at it too? Then we haven't even discussed that. I mean, literally, literally, um, we we saw a print and we're hoping for it to be cast um, in the next day or so. So so far, I've seen a photograph of, of a print in the mud. Yeah. Okay. I've sent I've sent John out to cast it. So we haven't even discussed anything about it. You know? Okay. Um, it, it, I saw it yesterday, and you know I'm really pleased about it. So we'll see what comes out of it. You know, I just like the reason I told you it is I, I like the idea of of research being carried on in different places and just coming up with new evidence, yeah, mm-hmm. in different areas. And it's and it's great that that's happening with the Iran Pendaka as we speak, yeah. So we're not going over rusty old ground, and <laughs> new things are being found all the time, yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. All right, Adam. Thanks a lot, my friend, for taking the time, and I'll talk to you soon again. Yeah, no worries, Damon. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, actually, for once. Yeah. Well, I know, actually, yeah, because we're actually seeing. I, I know who you, what you look like, because you've been, you know, famous Adam Davies on on video and Monster Quest and all that stuff. So, but now, you know, you know what I look like. So. Yeah, good stuff. It's, it's been a pleasure, man. Enjoy yourself. All right, take care of yourself, Adam, and. And talk to you on the line over there, you know, when we can. Yes, good. Cheers, Mom. All right, later. Bye. No,